Greetings, North Carolina. Hoffler here. Stephanie, that is. Um, Hoffler, does that last name ring a bell? Because I am better known as uh, Tom's daughter. Thomas Hoffler, recently deceased GOP redistricting expert, the one who drew those gerrymandered voting district maps and inspired the attempted census citizenship question. The computer backups that he left behind that I shared with North Carolina Common Cause brought unprecedented publicity to political demographics, but more importantly, in the hands of an amazing legal team from Arnold and Porter, they were helpful in winning court cases against some of my late father's work. I am pleased about that, and I have still a lot to do. Now, as you might imagine, a lifetime of experiences have left me with, well, a nasty taste in my mouth when it comes to the question of government. Uh, so endorsing a political candidate might seem like an unexpected move for me. And yet, I am endorsing Steve Woodsmall for Congress. The endorsement wasn't his idea. He and his wife, BJ, just really wanted to thank me personally and tell me that my efforts were appreciated and ask if there was anything that I needed. And they also wanted to tell me that we had in common a hope for justice and positive change. Hope, justice, positive change. I certainly like that. Now, recognizing these common goals, it seemed natural to ponder ways that we could work together. During a conversation with BJ, I was talking about my apolitical political beliefs, including the feeling that more power should be in the hands of the people, maybe even more than our current system allows. But it is that, our current system. And if I were to choose the federal office that would be least corruptible, well, let's see. Uh, the lower the person-to-politician ratio, the more power stays in the hands of the people, right? Well, 720,000 or so people per one representative. Okay, well, that's a lot of people, uh, quite a bit more than the 40,000 uh, it was back in 1787. And those guys weren't even aiming for inclusive. But at the federal level, it's the best that we've got. And even though the counting has been historically inaccurate, often intentionally so, at least there are numbers involved, unlike that other chamber of Congress that you've uh, noticed in the news lately. But North Carolina, District 11, what a story. I mean... I don't actually live in North Carolina, but we effectively adopted each other, don't you think? And there you are. And through the efforts of some really good and talented people, supplemented by a chain of incredibly unlikely coincidences, you now have one of the closest to fair, for sure one of the most widely scrutinized, congressional district maps in the country. Oh, and that's not all. <laughs> By the same or similar process, you also have at this moment a more reasonable voter registration policy, no upcoming list purges, no unconstitutional ID requirements, good information and very few threats delivered to you via distributed mailings. It can be argued, and I'm going to argue it, that for you, North Carolina, here and now, any vote is a protest vote. A true and meaningful blow to a plan to seize unjust power and a statement opposing the injustice that my father, with his typical sensitivity, described with a chuckle. Instead of the voters choosing the politicians, the politicians get to choose the voters. Eh. When he said that to me, he did not get a laugh. But as I said before, I don't much care for politicians. And I like them even less 
when they take orders from their party instead of from their constituents. Endorsing a political party is not what I want to do. So I'm not endorsing the DNC or the caucus or either party or any party on any level. I'm endorsing Steve Woodsmall because I believe that his sense of right and wrong won't allow him to do things like put the party before the people, no matter how convenient it might seem. Because a party really shouldn't be anything more than a means to the end of getting things done for the people, right? Not the other way around? Yeah, I remember now. A constitution that limits the government that we the people formed in trust? Yeah, those rules are not for us to obey. They are for us to enforce. And boy, do we have a lot of enforcing to do. But Steve has a lot of experience in public service. He understands his duty to defend that Constitution now more than ever. And I know that he also accepts his duty to stay within the boundaries set. Should you properly elect him a lawmaker and send him to Washington, D.C. to represent you to and defend you from a federal government run amok? And I do mean all of you, not just Democrats, not just donors, not just voters, not even just humans, everything, because everything matters. Those divisions and boundaries and borders, just like the maps my father drew, they're arbitrary, man-made, erased, and man-made again. We the people, we the planet, diversity is our beauty and understanding is our power. Undermine efforts to stratify, isolate, and rule over us with the hope that we'll forget that none of us ever promised to obey. But instead, only some of us, the few that were asked, gave conditional and revocable consent to be governed. And there I go, quoting political philosophy that decades ago, my father was first to teach me with an enthusiasm contagious enough to last me right through the loss of his own all the way to now. And I'm pretty sure it's with me to stay. So I don't give my endorsement lightly. And I told Steve that he'd better expect to hear from me. And I'd better have his ear, whether it's praise or complaints or whatever. And without missing a beat, he agreed. And he sounded sincere to me. Listen, Tom Hoffler was my father, and I failed to break through and bring him back to those ideals that he taught me to cherish. Over the years, he was bewildered by my stubbornness. You won't break that wall of injustice with your head, he would say. Perhaps, I would respond, but I'm afraid that I would rather crack my skull on it trying to bring it down than sit and just watch it stand there in front of me. Now, in spite of that enthusiasm, I really don't want to go back to D.C., but I will if I have to. Steve Woodsmall, he is ready to go, so I say send him. Vote for him this week and again in November. Now, I myself have to stay here in my other adopted home state, Kentucky, uh, because we have a Mitch McConnell to deal with. But if Steve were my candidate... I would vote for him. And if that's not an endorsement, I don't know what is. Power to the people, North Carolina. Peace.